In this video, we will discuss the ethical issues around how and why data is collected about each of us. We will look at the risks to personal privacy when working on computer systems and the internet. We will also discuss how computer programs can have beneficial and harmful impacts on personal security. Finally, we will discuss the importance that programmers have in terms of safeguarding personal privacy. There won't be any coding exercises in this lesson, but you will be exploring scenarios and implications related to programming in the world. On a daily basis, humans are creating more data than ever before. This is creating new challenges around protecting and securing that data for individual users, large companies, banks, small startups, doctors, movie makers, and everyone in between. This means it's more important than ever to be smart about security and privacy in the digital age of computing. Let's first get clear about what privacy and security actually are and what they mean to us. According to the Oxford Dictionary of Law, privacy is the right to be free from unwarranted intrusion and to keep certain matters from public view. Security is the state of being free from danger or threat. It's the warm, fuzzy feeling we have when we don't have to worry about feeling threatened by harm from others or things in the world around us. Digital technology has forever changed the way our society is operating and the ways we live. Every day, there are new ways to work and to play, which include new methods of interacting with each other. As our digital footprints grow, we all form our own online identities. Digital security is the protection of these online identities. A digital footprint is the information about a particular person that exists on the internet as a result of their online activity. This includes emails you send, comments you leave, pictures you post, your search history, and apps you use. Even your work on CodeHS is part of your digital footprint. All of these ways and more are the ways that you are sharing your own data. Anytime you use the internet, you are building your digital footprint. Every time you use a device, your data can be collected. Pause the video and consider these questions. You don't need to answer them all, but they should get you thinking more about your own digital footprint and the data you share. A lot of people think that hackers are going to steal their data, which they can and do, but truthfully, most people give up their data freely without thinking about it too much. It's important to be aware of your own personal data and how you choose to share your data with others so that you can keep your data secure and private. Here are some quick tips to maintain your digital footprint and protect your personal data. First, use privacy settings on apps and sites to limit your exposure. Review posts that your friends tag you in and address questionable content. Delete any old social media accounts you don't really use. Search yourself to see what other people see when they search for you on Google. Use strong passwords for every account you have. Stay on secure sites by sticking with HTTPS, not just HTTP. If you see a site that starts with HTTP, it's not secure. Be sure to monitor your webcam and microphone use and make sure you don't leave them on when you're not using them. Be aware of your location sharing on apps like Find Friends or whenever Google or a site asks you if you want to share your location. Skim privacy policies and see if anything jumps out that concerns you about how the site or app shares or uses your data. Watch for phishing attempts in emails. If someone you don't know sends you an email that seems odd or sounds too good to be true, don't click any links or download any content until you've looked into it more. Be careful logging into public computers, like at a library, for example. Your data is logged on those devices and may not always be wiped to a clean slate after you use it. Stay up to date on the best web security practices, like two-factor authentication, where you have to enter a code that's sent to your phone before you can proceed on an app or site. This code confirms you are who you say you are, and not someone trying to pretend to be you. If you think your personal data has been compromised, contact your parent or guardian, the company that owns the site or app, and or a school IT person so that you can get help or advice. All data is shared on the internet via what are called protocols. Protocols for data sharing on the internet are basically rules and conventions for communication between network devices. The internet is a packet switched system, 
through which digital data is sent by breaking the data into blocks of bits called packets. Packets contain both the data being transmitted and control information or metadata that helps route the data. It is only able to work because all machines have agreed to use the same protocols for creating and reading packets. Your computer and any server are able to share data because they use the same protocols. They are agreeing to speak in the same language. Computer use and the creation of programs have an impact on personal security that can be beneficial or harmful. Let's first take a look at some of the beneficial impacts. We share data whenever we email, make a video call, or post on social media. All of these have made it possible to communicate instantly with others and consume information at a very rapid pace. Sharing data enables collaborative problem solving on a very large scale. Here we have a screenshot from an online research video game called Foldit. Foldit is an example of citizen science that harnesses the problem solving capacity from hundreds of thousands of citizens on the internet to solve really complicated problems. Foldit was an online game where players attempted to solve the folding structures of very important proteins. By determining the structures of these proteins, researchers are able to develop vaccines and understand diseases better. Once the Foldit game went live on the internet, players were able to produce an accurate structure of an AIDS-causing virus in only 10 days. This virus had previously gone unsolved by computer simulations and researchers for 15 years. We share our data whenever we make an online purchase. Sharing data has provided us with online shopping that has enabled us to buy directly from retailers. We can easily purchase from other people who don't have the funds to run a physical store. We are able to find the best product at the lowest price, rather than being disadvantaged by location or lack of knowledge, because we can view ratings and reviews across all retailers. Sharing data allows more access to information. Anyone on the internet can read cutting-edge scientific publications now. You're able to learn on Code HS right now because you share your data with us. We also share data back with you when we grade your coding assignments. Without data sharing, this wouldn't be possible. GPS has completely changed how we navigate the world. You can leave your home with just your smartphone and you'll generally have no problem finding the place you need to be. You share your current location, which is data, and you're provided data around your position, such as images and directions. When you upload videos to YouTube, you share your data. There are also online gaming communities, so you can play games with someone in another country who speaks a different language, or you could be playing a video game with hundreds of other players simultaneously. You share things like your location and more with them as well. When companies like Netflix and Hulu stream videos to your home TV or device, there's a big exchange of data too. They share digital content with you and your family must share payment information and device information to allow access. Pause the video and consider these questions. What are some of the ways you personally have benefited from data sharing? This could be data you have shared or data that has been shared with you. Now let's talk about some of the harmful effects of shared data. As an example, there's a big question as to whether access to all information is actually a good thing. The website called WikiLeaks posts classified information that either governments or corporations are trying to keep secret. On one hand, this is a good thing because it promotes the transparency of information. It makes it so corporations and the government can't keep secrets from its citizens. However, there's potential danger in having classified secrets being public. There are some legal and ethical concerns that arise when sharing data, including access to copyrighted material, anonymity, and censorship. Peer-to-peer -peer networks allow people to share content or data that they have on their computers. This is fine if the files are their own creation, but oftentimes, shared content is not owned by the people sharing it. It's easier than ever to distribute information or content that is not your own, such as copyrighted works of art or copyrighted software. We can tell who internet users are by the data they share. How identifiable should internet users be? On one hand, anonymity supports equality for all on the internet. If all users are anonymous, 
users won't be targeted or discriminated against like for their gender or race because that information won't be available. However, having complete anonymity provides opportunities for cyberbullying. If all users are anonymous, no one is accountable for their actions. Censorship is also an issue that comes along with data sharing. For example, should Google display search results that have explicit or illegal content? Or should a government be able to filter what content its citizens see on the internet? Ideally, we want the internet to be an open place where all information is available. But things get complicated because different governments have different laws. And certain internet services might be illegal in one country and aren't illegal in another. All in all, data sharing has impacted many areas of our lives, both positively and negatively. Pause the video and consider this question. How has data sharing impacted your life? What are a programmer's responsibilities when it comes to securing data and keeping it private for others? Previously, we defined privacy and security in very general terms. Now, let's refine these definitions for data privacy and data security. Data privacy is defined as the appropriate use of data. When companies and merchants use data or information that is provided or entrusted to them, the data should be used according to the agreed purposes. Data security is commonly referred to as the confidentiality, availability, and integrity of data. In other words, it is all of the practices and processes that are in place to ensure data isn't being used or accessed by unauthorized individuals or parties. Data security ensures that the data is accurate and reliable and is available when those with authorized access need it. As programmers, we need to work hard to access and use people's and organizations' data only as needed and to secure any data we are entrusted with. It's best to use any data as though it were our very own personal data and consider the implications from there. There's an entire field in computer science that's related to keeping data private and secure called cybersecurity. In fact, CodeHS has a course for grades 6 through 12 called Introduction to Cybersecurity. Go check it out! Cybersecurity and the programming related to it make a great career and is a positive way to protect people and organizations. New opportunities are emerging all the time in cybersecurity. The 2017 median pay for information security analyst, or InfoSec, jobs was more than $95,000. Most of these jobs require a bachelor's degree, but sometimes experience is all that's needed. The job outlook for 2016 to 2026 is expected to grow by 28%, which is much faster than the average, where the growth is only about 7% for all other occupations. If you love programming, cybersecurity might be a great career path for you. But even software engineers, system administrators, and more need to consider protecting data when they code. We won't go into details here, but virtually every program ever created involves the transfer back and forth of data, so it's something that needs to be considered by everyone in a computer science or IT profession. Think about how you can make a difference with your life. Think of all the people you can protect if you learn how to keep digital information secure. As we can see, regardless of the positive impacts that certain technologies might have on society, they can also have unintended consequences that have a negative impact on society, law, and ethics. As programmers, we have a responsibility to make sure that our programs are socially, legally, and ethically acceptable. We call the ACM, or Association for Computing Machinery, Professional Code of Ethics, that we learned about in Module 5. Remember that knowledge is power as we live together in our digital world. Use your knowledge of computing for good purposes so you and everyone else can be safe and enjoy the benefits of computing. You may or may not choose a field in computer science as your career, but it's quite likely that your career will involve some form of technology and you will impact others with your choices in the chosen field. Now that you've learned more about the ethics around data collection, let's take a look at some resources and activities.